asking for his media accreditation, please. Camera's getting back now. And yes, very good evening, and you're very welcome live to Fraher Field for this uh, eagerly awaited minor hurling championship division one final between Ballygunner and Abbeyside. This behind closed door which is unfortunate but I know we've a uh, big viewership already uh, logged on for this much anticipated decider between these teams who've had some great battles at an uh, underage level over the last couple of seasons tonight promises to be no different the lights uh, in Friar Field this evening with Ollie Drummy on the way in everything is in order the field a little bit greasy from all the rain but uh, we're all set to go we'll very shortly minor finals you've played in a few of them yourself uh, always a special occasion and tonight you know even though there's no crowd here special night for these players yeah, I never got the opportunity to play in one right. uh, Gavin tonight because I've had a bad gunner and a couple in the trash but for most of these players will be there for a spine so unlike senior where you might argue well if you've won three or four before you might take the age off you 
you know, there won't be an edge off any of the Valley Gunner lads because most of these lads, for the majority of them, they haven't played in the finals before. So huge, huge occasion. I mean, you know, most of these guys start hurling when they're five, six years of age and this is what they're aiming for from, from early days and a uh, huge, huge day for both, both, both players. Let's hope it's a great game, Ireland. Let's hope so indeed. Uh, Tom Mansfield of Kappa Quinn, uh, fan is the man in the middle for this evening's decider. We'll take you through the uh, team line-out starting with uh, Valley Gunner. Uh, starting with the Gunners who are going for four in a row this evening. Keen Troy is going to be between the posts, Iverhain. Full back line, Daniel Coyley, Cormac Cantwell and Donica Fitzpatrick. The half back line, Mark O'Donnell, Robert Maguire and Craig O'Keefe. Keelan Furlong and Luke Horgan team up at centre field. Half forward line is Aaron O'Neill, Patrick Fitzgerald on the 40 and Dara Nolan. And the inside trio for the Gunners, Tommy Phelan, Ross Delahunty and Owen Max Sweeney. So uh, Fergal, from your own knowledge, you know you know a lot of these players well. Who are the maybe standout players to keep an eye on from Bally Gunners' point of view? Look, uh, there's a number of us in the back line. Uh to the semi-finals and the minor championship over the years Fergal Division 1 there's a good standard there and you know both teams came through testing enough semi-finals but will you know enter tonight's decider in confident confident mood yeah from the games I've seen I've seen a number of the games obviously the ones that Valley Gunner have been involved in and what the standard has been really good uh, the minor championship and, and, and the minor panel that's available for county this year is, 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 is very very strong and um, yeah I think it's going to be great game Aaron. Let's hope so indeed. We hope you do enjoy it wherever you're tuned in. And a big shout out as well to tonight's uh, sponsors from uh, both clubs, Adesco of Abbey Side, of course, Jack O'Hare and uh, a company there and Ballygunner uh, STS Special Technical Services. And thanks indeed to everyone involved and facilitating tonight's uh, broadcast. And we do hope you enjoy it. Tom Mansfield of Capaquina Fan is the man in the middle. Martin Kern of Onshan Fogel is the linesman underneath us here. And uh, Thomas Welch, I see, is the linesman over on the far other side, the Medellico Club man, the inter-county referee so no shortage of officials here in Farfield tonight as the subs make their way up to the designated areas in the stands plenty of room for the subs of course with no spectators here still in uh, good nick picked up on the far over side by Billy O'Connell putting Abbey side on the uh, first attack of the evening ball into the corner there Abbey side trying to get possession. Bally Gunner back there as well. And numbers, it's uh, flicked out. Good play. Looks like Charlie Goff on the uh, far over side. Tries to get this ball down the line now. Straight line hurling from uh, Abbey side's point of view. May well work out for them here. It's a difficult angle. This one is uh, curling in. It's uh, going to trickle out over the line there. Uh, Keen try, no bother with that one. So the first wide of the evening here in uh, Farfield. Misty enough uh, Farfield. I know the Division 2 final was postponed due to the fog in Lemmy Bryan. But all eyes on this uh, Division 1 decider. They met last year, of course, in the under-16 final, and Abbey uh, Bally Gunner prevailed after extra time. We will have a similar situation tonight if the teams are level. Come the end of the 60 minutes, I'm sure it'll be close. This puck out lobbed down, top of the half-forward line. Trying to go for that one is uh, Darren Nolan. Batted away and picked up by Abbey side, driven back with interest into the corner. Charlie Goff got a hurley to that one, but it's just intercepted by the Bally Gunner corner back. Donica Fitzpatrick, who's blocked down. In fact, it's uh, Joe Flynn on the far over side there for Abbey side. Gets it back. This one is looking like it's going to go to the same side of the post and white. Two good chances there, Fergal, for Abbey side. Just kind of maybe drifted rather, maybe in for the, the near off post there. Just unlucky. Yeah, good start for Abbey side, but uh, two pot shots probably from difficult angles. Now, there wasn't a whole lot inside for both players to play, but uh, two pot shots for difficult angles on a night like tonight, they're probably unlikely to go over. Absolutely. Might be better off spraying the uh, ball across the uh, wing there on that occasion. Now, we'll follow the play. Puckard down on top of the Bally Gunner half forward, and Arno Neal goes high for this ball, but it falls into the uh, full forward. And lovely stick work there by uh, Tommy Phelan. This is into the aforementioned Patrick Fitzgerald. A lot of talk about him coming into this game. Off his left hand side, off the hurley here on this occasion. That's just drifted the uh, wrong side of the post. Good pressure there from Abbey side. Got a bit of latitude. In 17, I think it was in last week's uh, semi final. And the uh, clock on the screen, as you're watching, is just going to be a minute uh, out. Just to bear that in mind as well, we'll keep an eye on the time. So two minutes gone here. Linesman has his flag up in the far over side. That's Thomas Welch. That's going to be a line ball to Abbey side. Just carried out over the line there. By uh, Rob McGuire, the Bally Gunner centre back, or Craig O'Keefe, I should say it is, on the uh, far over side. And line ball to Abbey side on the uh, bank side of uh, Friar Field. For this Division 1 County Minor Hurling final, Bally Gunner, of course, going for four in a row. Abbey side haven't won this title since uh, 2004. They dearly love to bring back that cup across the bridge this evening. Back covering there is the Bally Gunner centre back, Rob McGuire. Battling hard there with his man, trying to burst out with the ball. Has, has uh, 
Support there in the shape of Dunica Fitzpatrick. He uh, puts the Gunners back on the attack, but covering back there, wearing number 30 for Bally Gunners, Shawnee Lanigan. He's a good hurler and drives it back with interest, but just fails to keep that ball in play. And the linesman has his flag up again in the far over side. So both teams, I suppose, Fergal just trying to find their feet at this stage. It's probably going to take maybe five or ten minutes for him to adapt to these conditions as well. Ah, yeah, absolutely. In these greasy conditions, it's going to take a few minutes. But look, on the plus side, there's no real rain. Uh, there's a very, very slight wind, maybe favouring Abbey side, but other than that, good conditions other than a slippery surface. Lovely balance there and picked up by Tommy Phelan. This man has speed, shortens the grip there, but it's a good hook and stick it to his task is Sean Oak Finn, the Abbey side cornerback. Phelan has it again, tries to get possession, but it's intercepted by Abbey side there. Coming away with it is Sean O'Callaghan down the line looking for Dara Welsh in that uh, corner forward position for the Villagers this evening but sticking to his guns and hurling very well at Dunica Fitzpatrick. Relieves the pressure for the Gunners but not too far, gives it away. Back in with interest, driven back in by O'Callaghan. In as far as Charlie Treen, all eyes on him this evening, had a great campaign. Zabi side uh, defeated Dallas Allen that semi-final last again. Lovely diagonal ball down as far as uh, Patrick Fitzgerald just underneath the uh, stand here. Sticking to his task is Aidan Higgins, but Patrick Fitzgerald gets some latitude there going forward. And that's a pretty clear-cut foul. Tom Mansfield in uh, no hesitation there around the neck and a uh, chance for Bally Gunner to get the opening score of this uh, minor final. Dara Welsh there, the guilty party. And uh, chance now for Patrick Fitzgerald to open the scoring. No doubt about that one. Uh, Fergal Hurley came in around the neck there and should be an easy chance maybe. But in, on a night like tonight, I suppose, it might be a handy enough one to start. Yeah, no, I expect Patrick to put this one over the bar, but... Just uh, for the viewers at home, we're looking at we're in a sweeper situation where Sean Lanigan is going to sweep for Abbeyside and Cormac Cantwell is going to be the sweeper uh, for Ballygunner. That looks like, looks like it's been initiated by Abbeyside, possibly to nullify the threat of Patrick Pistero. So the sweeper sitting in front of Patrick Pistero and Cormac Cantwell in the far side. And the aforementioned Patrick opens the scoring from that free. 21 yards out, Paddy Gunner take the lead, a point to no score. Five minutes gone here in uh, Fraher Field. Misty conditions, but thankfully the rain has cleared up. Abbey side playing keep, go keep ball even, excuse me. Dara Welch who's playing deep, uh, well out from his corner forward position in with Stonica Fitzpatrick. That's a good hurley there, well intercepted. Abbey side battling hard to try and regain possession on the far over side of the field. It's flicked back out here as far as the centre forward. Louis Campbell tries to evade the first man and just Bally Gunner back there in numbers. Good defending by the defending champions. Out now to Dara Nolan on this uh, far over side. Tries to gain possession, has it in his hand. Has a man ahead of him there and that's uh, Ross Delahunty out from his full forward position. Bally Gunner trying to leave the space for there. Inside, 3 you inside. That's cut off. Good play. Full back play by Connor Kent. Tries to switch the direction of the play here. Battle for possession there. Keelan Furlong trying to get it. Abbeyside trying to keep that ball moving forward. May work out for Willie Bursford. Picked up by the Otso in forward and his uh, teammate Oshino O'Reardon. This guy has pace. Cross country runner, of course, and you can see it. And as his movement there, that's just gone to the right and wide. That's a third wide for Abbeyside. Got the shot off and a uh, couple of bad wides now for Abbeyside. And on a night like tonight, you need to be taking every opportunity. Just the one score so far, six minutes gone here in Farfield. All eyes on Keen Troy, who launches the puck out for the Gunners. Referee is signaled there, there was a push in the back. And it's going to be a free to uh, Abbeyside dead centre in the field. Looks like Shawnee O'Callaghan is going to come out to uh, take this one. The soft free is given, uh, Gavin, there is a free, soft free though, on a night like tonight, like when you expect there are going to be frees, lots of heavy tackling, the ones you don't want to get away. So all eyes now on uh, Shawnee O'Callaghan. In fact, Shawnee Lanigan, I think it is, wearing number 30 on. That is the equalising point. That's a huge effort from Abbey side, and they're off the mark. They have their opening score. It's a point apiece in this uh, minor final. As uh, Fergal mentioned there, needless enough free to concede from Bally Gunner's point of view. Lanigan puts it over. That's one that'll do the uh, confidence a uh, world of good. Willie Bursford. Abbey side go forward again, though, with Aaron O'Neill. Looking for the run inside. The man who has it is Patrick Fitzgerald, the danger man in this Bally Gunner. Attack going forward, Higgins stick it to his gun, take the shot, left outside, goal for Bally Gunner. Patrick Fitzgerald did all the spade work himself, it came from a direct ball in from Aaron O'Neill. And once he caught inside, Higgins stuck to his task, uh, there was just too much power in the shot at Fergal and brilliant finish there from Fitzgerald, he's well capable of doing that. Yeah, unfortunately for him, Higgins lost his hurley and uh, when he does a hurl against Patrick Fitzgerald, uh, he's going to open. Patch or uh, Willie Bears are trying to regain it. Who did get that uh, first point for Abbey side? That's a high tackle there. Referee says they'll get up though. Willie, you were waiting for the whistle. He was expecting the free. Probably should have got it, but Bally or Abbey side still have possession. Putting him on the attack inside. Looking for the danger man Charlie Treen inside, but Bally Gunner back there in numbers. This ball is uh, sprayed down the line. Keelan Furlong tries to control it there, and that's gone out. Linesman as he's flag up Martin Kern from uh, on Shan Fubble. Andy Maloney there, the Bally Gunner manager, just being told by Tony D to uh, stick to his own side. We have 1,000 viewers, I believe, on this uh, YouTube uh, stream already this evening. So thanks to Tomas Ruo Kyla for that. And 
Willie O'Mahony, who's our cameraman, and all those who helped put together tonight's uh, match. Much appreciated. Charlie Treen, all eyes on him. Left-hand side, impossible angle, side netting. Not sure whether he was going for a goal or a point. Maybe a better off for him maybe to spray that one across the 21, but opted for the shot. And it's a fourth wide for Abbey's side and may well come back to, to Rudy's yeah, chances, maybe. A very difficult angle uh, there for Charlie Treen, so it's reasonably ambitious one. No Patrick for sure, that one from a difficult angle down there, but maybe better options available. Puck out going to come now from uh, Bally Gunner down on top of the far over side. That is uh, Tommy Phelan again trying to get on it. Plays it back as far as his wing back. That's Craig O'Keefe off his left hand side looking for the run inside of Owen Max Sweeney who's drifting across that corner. But good corner back play there by Sean Oak Flynn. Gets it outside as far as Billy O'Connell. And again, Billy just kind of never really looked where he's hitting that ball and it's gone now harmlessly out over the sideline on the far over side. And a line ball to uh, Bally Gunner. Craig O'Keefe going to stand over this one, is he? Club lights on, seven minutes gone. It's uh, Bally Gunner, one, one, Abbey side a point. Patrick Fitzgerald with the Gunner scores, one, one, and Shawnee, uh, Willie Bursford, I believe it was, with that uh, point for Abbey side from the free. Bally Gunner goes short with this uh, sideline ball. Back there as far as Cormac Cantwell, good skill there, a bit risky by Cormac, but he got away with it. A support from Craig O'Keefe, and again, ba uh, Bally Gunner, a little overplay there going forward. Our Abbey side landing and off his right, a score there by Abbey side. Bally Gunner again for maybe guilty of overplaying it there, but uh, landing in there off the hurley. It was superb scoring. Do the, yeah, do the yeah, yeah. No harm. Score. I think it was William Beres. Was it Beres for against? Sorry, getting. He's wearing number ten, but I think he's playing centre forward on Rob McGuire, and he's that kind of Roman role. He's coming drifting across the midfield and drifting, and uh, very hard to mark as a centre back unless you've a midfielder sitting back on him. Very hard to mark a, a, a centre forward who comes deep and then drifts. Uh, but great finish, great score off the hurley, great score, William Beres. Super score by uh, Bursford, who was prolific in their semi-final win over De La Salle last uh, Wednesday evening. Of course, the semis, this fast-paced minor championship, which has run off very, very quick indeed. And all credit to the county board for getting all the matches complete and the finals night this evening here in uh, Fraherfield. This running repair has been done on the far over side. Could be a bit of a, an injury to one of the Abbey side uh, players. And Pat Welch down underneath us here, of course, the former... Formal Water Stalwart involved with Abbeyside and his sons involved and I know Mark Ferncombe is involved in the coaching capacity as well with the villagers. They've done a lot of work as have Ballygunner. Tom Mansfield is happy enough to uh, proceed and Ballygunner get on with this uh, quickly out as far as uh, Cormac Cantwell and again just rushed the shot there was blocked down rather easily by uh, Dara Welch on that occasion. But Ballygunner do have the uh, line ball and they're going to relieve the uh, pressure. 1-1-2 one, one, two, uh, two points. No spectators for tonight's final, but I know uh, plenty of people tuned in to tonight's uh, live stream on YouTube between Ballygunner and Abbey Side, and that uh, line ball by Cormac Cantwell. Kept it straight down the line, Fergal, but unfortunately from Ballygunner's point of view, over the line and Abbey Side regain possession. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, when short puckers don't work out for you uh, and you lose possession, it's turned over like it is now. Um, can be somewhat frustrating, but Cormac had an opportunity. He's a great hurler, Cormac, great full back. Had an opportunity there to clear it, and. Uh, but just huge pressure put on, I think it was, um, it was Dara Welsh, so all credit to Dara. Billy O'Connell on the far over side makes a great connection with this one. It's going to bypass his foot forward, it's going to go out over the end line there. That's a fifth wide now, I make it for uh, Abbey side who are getting on the ball, but a lot of them drifting the wrong side of the post, Virgil, and I know it's a cliche that yeah. you know, when a ball from a line ball goes away, yeah. it's kind of it's a huge way frustrating. I just don't think we should ever go from, never go from, because the, the percentages are, are way too low, you know, that ball should have been kept in play. Wise words indeed. And Craig O'Keefe picks that up. There was a chop on uh, Craig as he went for that uh, ball. You could see him really engineering the free there. And Tom Mansfield, no hesitation. Thomas Welch marking that on the far over side. And Patrick Fitzgerald is going to trot out to take this free. He's Bally Gunner's lone scorer so far with 1 1. Hoping to add to the tally. And uh, both sides past the settling down stage, I suppose. It now 12 minutes gone. The uh, clock on your uh, screen might be a minute out, so just bear that in mind if you are uh, logged on to this evening. And we welcome you all to the live stream this evening. Thomas Welsh just making sure everyone, the linesman on the far outside, that the Aidan Higgins is back. Irene Welsh, I should say, is back in the sufficient 13 metre distance. All eyes now on Patrick Fitzgerald, just inside the uh, 65 metre line, bank side of Fraherfield. Umpires have a good look at this one, point to each other, and they get the nod to it up the white flag. That's 1 2 now for Patrick Fitzgerald. That was a good free from far out. No hesitation from the Abbey side goalkeeper, David Byrne. He gets on with it very, very quickly indeed. Ball drops on the uh, 65 metre line, picked up by. Uh, Keelan Furlong for Ballygunner off his uh, left hand side. 
strikes it there and a, got a nasty enough belt there at the Abbey Simon. In fairness, there was no malice in it, just an excellent blocking technique. And uh, I think it was Reen Welch who got the follow through there. So that's what the helmets are for. Fergie, we took the, the full uh, belt of that one there. No um, malice, as I say, from Keelan, but just with a head injury, I suppose, wisely stopped by Tom. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like it's the side of his head and uh, it looks like it's a nasty bang. And uh, let's just hope he's okay. There seems to be blood coming out of it. Uh, let's just hope he's okay. And let's hope so indeed, and, and he knocked to the head now, I suppose, the referees are told to, to stop the play, and seems to be blood streaming there from the aforementioned midfielder. Let's hope it's nothing too uh, serious. Abbey side, of course, have Dr. Fergal Slevin, of course, with them on the line, so I'm sure everything, every measure is going to be taken care of. He seems to be indicating uh, that he'll have to be replaced. Uh, yeah, he seems to have got a bad bang, oh God, he does, he has a lot yeah. of blood. A lot of blood there, and he's going to trot off. I think he's holding his ear as well. He got the follow through there. He's given a, a nice round of applause by both sets of teams uh, as he came off. And nobody likes to see injured players. But that's obviously with the blood, and I presume it'll be a blood substitution, but obviously a blow to the head as well. So let's hope there's no go to concussion there or anything further. You just don't know these days. So Abbey side are going to have to make a change there as uh, Taylor Murray, the county PRO, makes their way down as well. That was a nasty enough. Brave there by Reen Welch. Of course, his dad Pat is down there. He was a brave hurler back in the day, and his sons are following on that trend. So Abbeyside are going to introduce a substitute. Looks like uh, Adam Carr Lawler is going to make an early entry into this uh, minor final. 14 minutes gone. One two to two points. Bally Gunner lead. Picked off the ground there by Shawnee Callan, right under the nose of Tom Mansfield. Followed that one. And a chance for Patrick Fitzgerald to tack on another score for the uh, Gunners, just outside the 65 meter line. Got one from a similar position on the far side there a minute ago, Fergal. Um, he'd be hoping to continue the trend. Yeah, they're difficult frees, you know, in these conditions. Under normal conditions, you'd certainly fancy Patrick Fitzgerald to put this over, but these are very, very difficult frees in these conditions. But again, it's one of those frees, if you're a Pat Welch or any of the heavy side guys, you just don't want your players giving away those simple frees. You can forgive the ones where, you know, it's over aggression in the tackle, but those simple ones, picking the ball off the ground, pushing it back, they're the unforgivable ones. And Patrick Fitzgerald right behind this in our commentary position. That dissects the post. It's 1-3 now for Patrick Fitzgerald, son of the, of the famous Anthony, of course, well-known referee here in the Dacia. David Byrne with the puck out for Abbey side, launching it down top of the centre-forward position. Bypasses a cluster of bodies there. Abbey side trying to regain possession. Cormac Cantwell who seems to be operating in that loose role for Bally Gunner. Picked up by uh, Craig O'Keefe. He's hurling well at number seven. Tries to burst his way out. The Gunners have it. Another hand pass. Good use of it. And it's relieved. Pressure relieved by Rob Maguire, down top of Tommy Phelan. This lad has pace as he pushed in the back. Referee waves play on. Aidan Higgins trying to stick to his task there. It's picked up by the other Ballygunner corner forward, Owen Max Sweeney. Brother of Niall, of course. Crossfield ball, Dara Welsh, 15, and he's back, but playing way out in that roving role for Abbey side. Turns to his opposite side here, had a man down the line, but opted to clear it up the field, but nobody there. Only Ballygunner's Mark O'Donnell. Gets a bit of latitude and has support in the shape of Patrick, or for Patrick Fitzgerald, in fact, it's Luke Horgan. Good hurler, as Fergal was saying earlier on, drives through that 45 metre line, slitter glue to the hurley, has an option outside, off the hurley, this will be a super score, caught inside, good goal coming with David Byrne. Gets it down the line, but again it's on top of this, Mark O'Donnell, the Ballygunner wing back, he's hurling a lot of ball, plays it down the line, Ballygunner, keep ball, diagonal ball across field from Aaron O'Neill. Lovely little sidestep there, lovely little touch on the hurley by Max Sweeney, tries to... Get Darren Nolan away in the far over side, just gets some latitude ahead of Connor Kent, the full back, who's sticking to his guns though. Good play by Nolan in a battle for possession. Big strong man gets the shot in there. Scoreboard side of the field, David Byrne looks over this one, taps the crossbar and you know the way he's reacting to that's on target. That's the first from play from Darren Nolan. A lot of pressure being put on him. Managed to got that over the shoulder like and that's a superb score as Bally Gunner extend their lead. 1-4 to 2 points. Puck out taken very shortly. First water break I'd imagine will be coming up very, very shortly indeed. This is picked up by Willie Burst for the man Abbey side. Want to get on the ball. He's on the 45 metre line going forward. Lovely little flick inside. He can't catch this one again but doesn't need to because it bounces to the ground when he just lost possession at a crucial moment and Bally Gunner can take this ball out. Good use of the hand pass by Keelan Furlong. On as far as Robert Maguire, the centre back. Another hand pass. Bally Gunner playing keep ball. Tom Mansfield nearly got a shot in the way of that one but uh, evaded the shot from Rostella Hunty and Abbey side regain it. Put down the line as far as Willie Burns for Abbey side trying to get him on the ball as much as they possibly can. Tries to cut inside, he's inside the 45, over the shoulder, that'll be a superb score, looks good from our angle here, that's a superb score by Willie Bursford. Super score there, 1-4 to 3 points and uh, Abbeyside will be happy with that one, probably needed that one Fergal Hartley. Yeah, needed that to stay in touch Gavin, but super score, there's two great scores really uh, uh, from Bursford. Um, you know, he looks like the player that Ballygunner are going to have to watch closely. 
Uh, he's kind of kept him in the game to some extent, but um, you know, Abby said probably been a little bit wasteful with possession. Probably has have had more scoring opportunities than Ballygunner. Yet find themselves four points down at the water break. First water break here in Farfield. It's uh, Abby uh, Ballygunner leading Abby side by one four to uh, three points. Patrick Fitzgerald, of course, with the goal. He's got one three for Ballygunner in this uh, opening quarter, and uh, teams will get their minute now to get their uh, water. David Byrne, the Abby side uh, goalkeeper. And uh, many thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in to tonight's uh, live stream. Thanks to Tomas Rue, O'Kyla and uh, Willie O'Mahony, of course, on video. And indeed, uh, come Lucas, Will, Port Lorega, everyone in the help and organisation of uh, tonight's uh, live stream. And orders oh, a good few Ballygunner uh, parents, I believe, below in the Gold Coast Hotel uh, tuned in. Of course, they probably didn't have much option for not being left in here, but uh, yeah. I see, they're uh, down there, I believe, tuned in. Young Dara Walsh there, unfortunately, gone off, uh, heavily bandaged. It looks like he's uh, going to be heading off, so we wish him the, the very best of luck. Absolutely, yeah. Well uh, said indeed. And Tom Mansfield not giving him... Giving him, they've had their 30 seconds. And uh, let's hope that Reen makes a speedy recovery from that uh, accidental, totally accidental uh, belt there from Keelan Furlong. No one, there hasn't been any malice in the game so far whatsoever, um, Gavin. As you expect in many minor games, there's been there's been no off the ball. Yeah, there hasn't even been any cynical play really. You know, it's been played in very good spirits, and I suppose what happened to Reen is unfortunate, but it certainly wasn't. Uh, there was no malice. There was absolutely, no absolutely. Show great bravery to be going in for the block in the first exactly. place, and just came out second best. Unfortunately, injuries do occur, I suppose, in the game of hurling, which we all love so much, and it's great to have it back. The last couple of weeks, the minor championship, of course. Run off very smoothly. It will draw to a close tonight, of course, if we are level at the end of full time, we'll have extra time, possibly penalties. It hasn't happened yet in any hurling game. It might happen tonight. You never know. We'll follow the play. It's picked up on the far over side by Sean Lanigan, getting on a lot of possession for Abbey side. Into the full forward line, looking for Charlie Goff and Everett's well cut off inside by uh, Donica Fitzpatrick, hurling very well in the Valley Gunner full back line. Gets it down the line, pushing the back seem to be anywhere from our position, but the referee Tom Mansfield is happy enough to wave play on. Valley Gunner still have possession and Craig O'Keefe. Gets a bit of latitude there and off his left-hand side, puts him back on the attack into Patrick Fitzgerald. Seems to be operating between the full and half forward. That's a lovely bit of stick work there, but it just didn't come off for him. And Abbey side back there in numbers. Sean Oak Flynn tries to get the clearance. Battle for possession on the far over side of the pitch. Pretty close to the sideline. Who's going to come away with this one? Linesman has his bag up. Thomas Welch is going to be a line ball into the Gunners. 1-4 to 3 points with uh, 20 minutes gone in the opening half. Just looking at the setups here, uh, Gavin, I suspect, you know, Abby said are going to find it difficult to find scores because they've got two men only inside their own half at the moment and Cormac Cant will sit and, you know, as sweeper, it's going to, you know, they'll have to score from distance and tonight is not. Mm. And, I, for and he's a good hurler to be leaving yeah. unmarked as well, Fergal, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, develops as the evening goes on. 1-4 to 3 points, expect scores to be at a premium. Every score going to be crucial tonight. Patrick Fitzgerald has that line ball and then that one just goes to the wrong side of the post, so... As you were saying earlier, Fergal great when they come off, but when they don't, I suppose, as, as another forward, you're kind of frustrated, aren't you? Yeah, they come off maybe one of the six, one of the seven. Is that enough? Short puck at as far as Dara Welch. He's getting on a lot of ball, but again, he's just poking it up as far as Valley Gunners. Loose man, Cormac Cantwell, he'll mop them up, up all day. Gets it outside as far as Keelan Furlong. Off his right hand side, diagonally switching the direction of the play. You can see he's looking for the run of Patrick Fitzgerald every time. Gets this in his hand and holds. Referee, I think, has a hand up for an advantage. Will he make it count? Fitzgerald makes it count anyway. 1 4 now for Patrick Fitzgerald. He's on fire. But the vision there, lovely one-touch hurling Fergal from between Furlong and Fitzgerald, they have that understanding, great score. But that's exactly what Abbey said, can't do, poke that ball into the space where Cormac Cantwell is, nice little flick to Furlong and a great pass to Patrick Fitzgerald. Bally going to come forward again, taking off the no, the hurley there off the come on of Craig O'Keefe, that's good battling by Abbey side, they're not going to give up to the, go the ghost, they dearly love to win this final this evening, trying to be prodded forward there as far as Shawnee O'Callaghan, they need to get him on the ball, off his left hand side, this will be a super score, plenty of distance on it, keeper looks it all the way and it's gone over the bar. Good score there. Much needed one, Fergal, from uh, Shawnee O'Callaghan and Abbey Sides' point of view. Yes, yeah, the score from distance and very good score in the context of the game and in the context of the conditions. Keen try with the puck out for Bally Gunner. 1-5 to 4 points. The champions lead down on top of Tommy Phelan. Battling hard there with Sean O'Finn. Tries to get the flick on it. Does well. It's going to stay in play though. Ball wasn't out. This time it is though. Flicked off the hurley there of Owen Max Sweeney by uh, Dara Welch. Who's Playing way out of the corner forward position in that sweeper role. Still getting on a lot of ball. And Martin Curran signal that's going to be a line ball to the Gunners. Patrick Fitzgerald going to trot across to take this one. 
we should see whether he elects to shoot or whether he keeps in play I'm sure well, Fergal if he's, if this co- if he's coming out for it I suspect he's going to go for it so look he has the ability but let's we'll see what happens let's see what happens is right number 11 on his back doesn't really make a clean connection with this one but it does stay in play may well work out for Ballygunner battling with possession of Rostel Hunty and he's and the full back for Abbeyside Abbeyside break out with Tara Welsh trying to get the hand pass away but just doesn't get sufficient distance picked up by Patrick Fitzgerald good defending there by Aidan Higgins Got the hook on him, that's good play. Grandson, of course, on the famous Dr. Tom Higgins. Picked up by Patrick Fitzgerald again, tries to go forward there. Was he charging? Referee says it was a free in there. Illegal tackle there, a little bit hectic by the new man in Adam Carl Lawler, who I thought kind of maybe stood his ground, Fergal, there. But uh, obviously Patrick Fitzgerald bought the free there. Must have been getting a few flips off, tight, off uh, fly maybe on that one, maybe if you're <laughs> not too sure. But anyway, it's given. He was blocked here, um, but... Patrick was blocked down, re won possession, um, won a free and difficult angle, but certainly a fancy a player like Patrick to put it over the bar. It's just outside the uh, 21 metre line, stand side of uh, Fraher Field in this county minor A hurling final. Wherever you're tuned in, we hope you're enjoying it. 1 4 to his name so far out of Valley Gunners, 1 5. And uh, he is human after all. That one goes the wrong side of the post. It was a difficult angle, I suppose, for that right-handed hitter, Fergal. It's hard to maybe judge at times, but uh, that one goes uh, wrong side of the post. David Byrne with the puck out for Abbey side. That's a bit of relief. They'll be hoping to regain possession now, and they may do so here with O'Callaghan on the far over side on the 45-meter line. Hits the ball on the run. It'll be a superb score. Keeper looks up, but it's just gone to the left and wide. That's sixth wide now. I make it for Abbey side. Who were t- electing to shoot from distance, I suppose they have no choice with uh, no men inside in the full forward line. And this allows Valley Gunner, as you can see from your picture, to allow that short puck out and a bit of space and relief for Dunica Fitzpatrick, who opens the shoulders and puts the Gunners back on the attack. Aaron O'Neill trying to win that ball, battle for possession. Who's going to come out with this? Tommy Phelan, lovely stick work there by this man. Such a tidy hurler, has support there in the shape of his uh, full forward, Delahunty. He drops this one short, bread and butter stuff for David Byrne, opens the shoulders, puts Abby side back on the attack. He's looking for Charlie. And the centre forward there, Louis Campbell on the far side. Haven't seen a whole pile of him. They'll be hoping to get him on the ball. Good play there. Cornerback play by Daniel Kiley. Two belly gunner cornerbacks hurling an awful lot of ball. This one switched back there as far as the gunner centre back. Rob Maguire gets on it. Left handed down the line. Almost cut out by Shawnee O'Callaghan. Try to be controlled by Owen Max Sweeney. He gets on it, covering a lot of ground and coming out from that corner forward position to get on the ball. But a little bit of overplay there by the gunners. And Shawnee O'Callaghan was quick in to try and win it. It's picked up by Abby Side. Down the line, Louis Campbell has support back there now from Lanigan. Very close to the sideline. It'll be a super score. It's going to drop short. Keeper has an eye on this one, but it's gone all the way and over the bar. It's just, oh no, it's gone the wrong side of the post. I thought the way the keeper had to hurry up that it was gone over, but a seventh wide and a lot of them maybe Fergal are their pot shots on an evening like this yeah, evening. I mean, in fairness, they're all good efforts, but almost every one of them have been from either very, very difficult angles or long range. And uh, you know, you, you might argue, is there a better option maybe getting balls inside? Abbeyside though regain possession of Shawnee O'Callaghan who's kind of growing into this game and you feel if Abbeyside can get him on the ball they would be better placed and better to throw the gauntlet at the defending champions picked up here now by Oshino O'Reardon covered a lot of ground gets it into the aforementioned O'Callaghan he has a man in the line if he spotted him he likes to go for the score has it curled in umpires looking at each other it's gone inside the post good effort there by O'Callaghan Self and Keelan Furlong there having an out get to know you but that was a good score by uh, the Abbey side player who's wearing number 31, his second of the evening. 1 5 to 5 points, back down to a goal. Patrick Fitzgerald's goal separating the sides. Failed to be gotten under first pick up there by Abbey side coming out. It always Callahan getting on the ball and a free. He is this kind of player, Fergal. If Abbey side can get him more on the ball and deliver that ball inside, or else maybe shoot for some scores, it will certainly bolster their challenge. Yeah, he's certainly very heavily involved in the play. Uh, Charlie Treen, I know Abbey side will be disappointed maybe that he's mm. starting to play that bit more. and. He's out now on his own far 65, almost taking this free and it'll be a great score if it goes over. Certainly will and yeah, we haven't seen too much of Charlie yet to get into the game. He's been hugely influential in Abbey Side's run to the final. All eyes on him now, difficult enough free from outside his own 65. It's going to drop short on the 13 metre line. Who's first to react to it? Ball breaking inside. It's a Valley Gunner Mando, first time ground hurling. Out as far as Rob Maguire who has some space here and evades the first challenge. Has support up the line from his midfielder, that's Luke Horgan. He has a look up trying to play it up as far as Darren Nolan. Looking for the run of Fitzgerald inside. Tried to be flicked away there. Referee happy enough to wave play on. Darren Nolan tried to get possession for the Gunners. 
man picking it up though is Patrick Fitzgerald. That familiar style of his. In fact, it's the uh, full forward, Ross Della Hunty. Good hurler, this guy off his right hand side, but good pressure there and good defending by Abbey side. Still Della Hunty tries to get the pop pass back as far as Craig O'Keefe. A wall of blue and gold jerseys around him. Keelan Furlong, Abbey Valley Gunner, happy enough to play keep ball, maybe over hitting that one, but Luke Horgan will still gain this. For the defending champions, far over side of the field. Floodlights on here in far field for this much anticipated minor A final. Horgan is going this way and that. Manages to keep the ball on the hurling. Another pop pass back inside as far as Darren Nolan. Fails to hold it though. Gets it back as far as Patrick Fitzgerald. Bally Gunner trying to get him on the ball every possible occasion. And you can see why when he can score from there and do that. That's a superb score by Patrick Fitzgerald. 1-5 now for the man on the 40. David Byrne not hanging around. I mean, they don't want to puck out, but look where he pucks it down. Top straight back as far as Valley Gunner and Aaron O'Neill. They can respond with interest. Andy Maloney on the sideline, urging them on. Good play there by Sean Oak Flynn on the ground. Good to see that ground hurling game is still alive here this evening. Valley Gunner to have it back. Keelan Furlan, lovely sidestep by the Valley Gunner captain. Tries to go inside. Bounces the ball on the hurley off his left hand tr side. Tries to prod it forward and it's picked up by Abbey side. Good full back play there. Good defending by Abbey side and Sean Lanigan who seems to have drifted back from the midfield into the uh, full back line on the far over side Charlie Treen there trying to get on the ball haven't seen too much of him for Abbey side this evening Ali Gunner trying to regain possession there as well it's stuck in that uh, corner referee says there was a push though I think it was actually young Charlie Goff who was nudged in the back four minutes of additional time and I'm sure this is a must score free now Fergal Hartley from Abbey Side's point of view and Charlie Treen hopefully to from his point of view get off the mark and get it back to a goal yeah he didn't connect with the long range one um, particularly well but I suppose when frees are close in you may adopt a slightly different style and this one is certainly scorable albeit at a very difficult angle so four minutes of additional time just uh, bear in mind the clock on your screen is just a minute out and we have uh, four minutes of added time, primarily that due to the uh, nasty injury picked up by Reen Welch. We do wish him a speedy recovery. And all eyes now on uh, Charlie Treen. Difficult angle for a right-handed striker. He's on the 21-metre line under the floodlit for her field. They need this one. And it's gone to the left and wide. Not good for a young free taker. Two very, very difficult frees. That one a very difficult angle. Last one almost on his own, 65. Uh, two very difficult frees, two misses. Won't be good for his confidence. It won't be good. And I think the eight wides there, certainly the wides mounts. Wides mounting up now from Abbey Side's point of view. Donica Fitzpatrick seems to be getting an awful lot of time to clear the ball. Abbey Side, of course, not really adopting a lot of forwards up there. And that trend hasn't worked so far, you feel, in this opening half. May work out on this occasion there, though. Well, it's good sticking to it. His task there, good defending by uh, Bally Gunnar, their centre back. Robert Maguire hurling an awful lot of ball. Prodded forward there, Patrick Fitzgerald. Beautiful stick work, beautiful balance off the hurley. This will be a super score. Umpires look at each other and it's just beautiful to watch, Fergal. It's a privilege to be here to watch this guy. You've seen a lot of him growing up from refereeing and being involved in board in Oga, various county finds. Just a top quality hurler. Yeah, that was a great four flight. He's a uh, in motion, but great work by Luke Horgan. They look up for Patrick, and when Patrick gets it, in fairness, he's difficult to stop. One seven to five points. Bally Gunner have possession again. Keelan Furling is hurling a lot of ball at centre of the field. Referee says that was an illegal tackle. Seemed to be a fair enough shoulder. Charlie Goff isn't too happy with it as his arms out to say it was a fair shoulder, but Tom Mansfield says illegally so. Free and a chance for Patrick Fitzgerald to add to his tally of uh, one six out of Bally Gunner's total of one seven in the opening half. I think overall, Gavin, Abbey side, I suppose, they're very conscious of the Patrick Fitzgerald trade. Mm. They're not just playing a sweeper, but they're actually playing their team deep back to field. And as a result, it leaves them with very little scoring threat at the far end. Mm. And uh, hence, if Patrick puts this over, there's going to be six points between the teams. And a big gap, big enough gap on a night like tonight. It certainly is. And the flight of the ball this time just goes to the wrong side of the post from his point of view. Course. Commentator's curse by uh, his own club, man. <laughs> he won't thank you for that, for a good <laughs> 1-7 to uh, 5 points, Valley Gunner lead, uh, 32 minutes gone, It'll be 31 on your screen, we're just a minute behind, 4 minutes of injury time signalled, Abbey side have the ball, they could do with a score before half time, man off the shoulder here, that's a good effort here by landing off his left hand side, off the post and over the bar, Umpire was nearly getting ready to outstretch the arms and wave it wide, but that's uh, a good score, Burrsford again, sorry, he's, I keep on he's, he's mixing up the havoc at centre forward, yeah, it there. I say he's wearing 10, he's playing at 11, and he's given a free roll and you know I think that's his third. Uh, he's causing havoc there. Uh, and certainly he's been his Abbey said standout player in the first half. 
Good score by Willie Burrsford. 17 to 6 points. Puck out now from the Bally Gunner. Costonia, that's keen try. Ball dropping on the 65 metre line. Abbey Sideman trip there. Free. According to Tom Mansfield, it was Charlie Goff, in fact, who's certainly operating way out of the corner forward position. Again, he tries to move back inside now. And it'll be interesting to see Abbey's Charlie Treen miss the last couple. I think he hands that ball to Willie Burrsford, who's still a long distance out, Fergal. So maybe are you better off dropping these ones in around the square? Yeah, and this is the one exact same position on the far side that uh, Char uh, Treen tried just just seven or eight minutes ago. Very very difficult free uh, and conditions like tonight. It's going to be uh, Willie Burrsford, but of course James part of the Abbey side senior panel in both hurling and football. And Bally Gunner, you can tell by the way they were just reacting to that, leaving it out over the end line. It's another wide for uh, Abbey side nine. I make it. And again, a lot of them from long distance freeze and possibly you might be better off dropping it in, but I'm sure Bally Gunner, their goalkeeper Keen Try won't mind. He's gonna get on with it and puck this ball out, drops on top of the 65 meter line, down on top of Patrick Fitzgerald. You can see to get him knocking the head there with the referee happy enough to wave play on. Willie Burstford with the brick flick forward, trying to get Charlie Treen on the ball as well. Cut out good centre back play. He's hurling well. Rob McGuire, the rocket centre back for Bally Gunner this evening. Tommy Phelan in a chase for possession here. With Lanigan on the far over side. Lanigan sticks to his task and wins it well. Hand passes it outside as far as Shawnee O'Callaghan. 31 in his back. Spraying it down the line, looking for Abby side inside. Corner back Donica Fitzpatrick underneath that one. And good corner back play, I suppose. Engineered it well. Fergal down over the ball, pushing the back, and probably no need to foul where he was, but that's a relief for Belly Gunner. Great play by Donica Fitzpatrick, you know. Uh, 19 for Abby said Joe Flynn was in front and Donica got a great flick in and then and then won the free himself. So great cornerback play. Great cornerback play. Joe Flynn started instead of a Jack McGrath for uh, Abby side. And of course they've had to introduce Adam Carroll Lawler for the injured Reen Welch uh, midway through the uh, first half. And uh, that is the halftime whistle here in Farfield in this uh, minor A final. Bally Gunner four points up and before we do take a breather, Fergal obviously it's been the Patrick Fitzgerald show you could say with 1-6 that goal proven inclusion but Four points up, Bally Gunner, and you'd have to say pretty well on top in a lot of positions. Yeah, certainly Bally Gunner, you'd say, have been more efficient of the two teams. I mean, Abbey said have had nine wides. A lot of them, I say, you could argue, okay, was there was there a chance? There possibly was, but it was a very very difficult chance, and you you think they might be better served getting that ball into their full forward and leaving one or two more players, at least leaving two players inside, that they'd give them an option to play that ball in rather than taking pot chops from distance. So certainly Bally Gunner, the happier at half time, certainly the more efficient in terms of use of chances. Um, at four points, probably a reasonably fair reflection of where the game is at. It certainly is indeed. So we'll take a breather half time in this uh, minor A hurling final in uh, Friar Fields. Do hope you're enjoying the action. It's Bally Gunner in control though at the break. They're leading Abbey side by 1-7 to six points.
Welcome back to Farfield for this uh, county minor A hurling final. Yeah, just getting the final bits ready here. Thanks to uh, Rua for that. And uh, Fergal, as I uh, mentioned there, Bally Gunner in control, 172 uh, six points. And this man again, Patrick Fitzgerald, lining up this free. Dead straight in front of the field here in Farfield. And it's a familiar finish from Patrick Fitzgerald, 1 7 now for the uh, centre forward. He's been Bally Gunner's chief marksman for a long number of years now. This fella has some future ahead of him. And that's another brilliant score. One eight to six points. Ball picked up by Darren Nolan underneath us here. In our commentary position, picked up though by Abby Side, Sean O'Callaghan trying to go forward. They need him on the ball. They need scores and quickly. Still a long way to go though, but they could do it one here. Popped inside. Abby Side in the corner trying to regain possession. Back as far as their centre forward. That's Louis Campbell. Gets inside the cover. Donica Fitzpatrick, this lad has pace. Pops it across in as far as Charlie Treen. They need to get him on the ball. Bally Gunner back there in numbers though, and it is the aforementioned Fitzgerald way back. Trying to help out his defence, Shawnee O'Callaghan. Turning and twisting, good play by the Gunners though, pushing him out the field. That's what they want to do. Sprays this ball across as far as Charlie Tree looking for his first score of the evening, and it drops into the waiting arms of Keane Troy, and he relieves the pressure for Bally Gunner. Pumps it down the field, past the uh, 45 metre line. 65 metre line, even Abbeyside are there first, and it's flicked outside. Dara Welsh, chance to relieve the pressure for... 
Abbey side as John Jackson enters the fray here in Farfield. All eyes on Charlie Three now, tries to spray it, the diagonal ball across, but it's been a loose possession there by Abbey side, and they're just guilty of maybe overplaying that ball, and Bally Gunner relieved the pressure. It's picked up by Craig O'Keefe, hurling it on the ball in the half back line, down the line. Picked up though by Dara Welsh, who's covering that ground well for Abbey side. But again, it seems to be coming back out just as quick, but Abbey side do have this on Charlie Goff. This guy has pace if they can get him on the ball. Tackle seem to be high there. Referee is happy enough to play, play it on. In as far as Charlie Treen, a wall of black and red in front of him, gets the shot off though, but it's to the wrong side of the post. And again, great work red Fergal from uh, Bally Gunner and Abbey side. You know, it's just, I suppose they have to work so hard for a score and that's proven to be, you know, the difference tonight. I think that's that 10th wide now for Abbey side. Yeah, just those wides are building up and building up and as they have been in the, in the first half and, and Charlie Treen has had two efforts on there, the one dropped short, one went wide. So you know, that's something Abbey side will be disappointed with for sure. That's good first time hurling by Bally Gunner. Louis Campbell trying to get on the ball to centre forward. He is hurling well, but he has to come very, very deep for possession. Was that a throw? Referee says play on. Out as far as his wing back, Billy O'Connell. Down the line, back to his uh, centre forward, trying to evade that first challenge. Good stick work. Can't catch the ball, so has to hit it off the hurling. Cut off by Darren Nolan. And picked up by the midfielder, Luke Horgan, nephew of uh, the famous Paul Finn, of course, former Bally Gunner and Waterford star. Picked up by Abbey Side. And pop back outside as far as Darrell Welch, who has some latitude now, tries to cut inside as far as his right inside. But look at the work rate of Bally Gunner, two, three men after him. Picked up, trying to Willie Burrsford, who was prominent for Abbey side in the first half, but just intercepted there by the Gunners on this occasion. Patrick Fitzgerald, look how deep he's come to work out his defense, but good interception by Burrsford on the side and off his left hand side. It'll be a super score, but you can judge no straight away by Keen Troy's reaction. That's another one, 11 wides now for Abbey side. And as you say, as Fergie was mentioning, in commentary, adding up and Especially on a night like tonight, for you know, every one of these count, you know. Yeah, Willie Burris, but has been excellent to be fair. But yeah. another shot, possibly from you know a very very difficult position, and you just would wonder, you know, would they be better served getting that ball in there to Charlie Tree, maybe into the danger area? Puck out coming from Bally Gunner goalkeeper Keen Troy, down on top of the uh, 45 meter line. It's a good puck out by Troy. Certainly getting plenty of distance. Tommy Feeling trying to get it inside as far as Max Weenie, the corner forward bypasses him and his marker, and I'm trying to Aiden Higgins in a bit of bother here. But, Relieving the pressure is David Byrne, the goalkeeper, and he drives it back with interest, putting Abbey side back on the attack, but only down the throat of the Bally Gunner half back line. They've certainly been hurling well this evening on top in a lot of uh, positions so far in this uh, Division 1 County Minor Hurling final. Coming to you live from the Farrar Field. Floodlights are on. Battle for possession now. Tom Mansfield happy enough there to just let the play develop and see who comes out with it. It's an Abbey side man. Flicked forward there by. Shawnee O'Callaghan on, and again Abbey side just bumbling possession tonight. Greasy ball on the greasy surface. Possession so so vital, but it's poked down on top of Abbey side again. Mopping back there is the number 30, Sean Lanigan. He drives it back with interest. Here's a bit of space now for Campbell, the centre forward. They could do with this on Abbey side, and it's got over the bar. Good score there by Louis Campbell. It's his first of the evening. He's getting on a lot of ball. Abbey side need a bit more of that. That was more direct Fergal, and this time I suppose the end product was there. One eight to seven points. Yeah, very risky hurler, and uh, but great ball out there from uh, from Lanigan and found, uh, found uh, number 11, Louis Campbell, very well and great finish. Great finish by Campbell. Tommy Feeling in a chase for possession here, trying to come across there. Good defending by Abbey side. It's good play by Lanigan again. Again, just overcooked that one though, and it's picked up by the Ballygunner midfielder, Luke Horgan, hurling a lot of ball. Diagonally looking for the run of... Patrick Fitzgerald, lovely touch by Fitzgerald and a lovely second touch as well to evade the tackle. He's on the 21, thinking about goal here, but good combination play there by Abbey side. And they've locked that one down. That's great defending there by the villagers and their fullback, Connor Kent, who gets the hand pass out as far as Dara Welch. And he relieves the pressure for the Western side, who try and get back into this game. One handed flick there forward again. Gone a little bit too far. It's going to be picked up though by Callan. Flicked away from him. That's good defending. It seemed to be a good tackle there, but under the nose of Tom Mansfield. Says maybe it was just a little bit over anxious there, maybe further by Karma Cantwell. I know, not sure whether what you saw on that one there, but yeah, yeah. And to be, you know, I didn't think that was a free, but to be fair to Tom Mansfield, I think he's done a great job tonight in difficult conditions and he's left the game run. And you know, a bugbear of mine sometimes is these high tackles or were supposedly high tackles and players playing for freeze and playing for yellow cards, and there's no danger whatsoever. And uh, he's left some of those run ones that look like. Maybe to, because they're given in the past that they, they should be frees, they should be yellow cards. He's left them run, I'd say fair play, Tom. Didn't feel that was a free, I felt we actually won the ball. Um, but just back earlier, fantastic body on the line, uh, blocked there on a, on, on, on a Patrick Fitzgerald shot. But you were expecting the net to rattle, but brilliant, brilliant defending by Abbey side. 
Happy side need this one and Charlie Treen finally has his first score of the evening and that'll be one that'll surely get his confidence going as well. It's back to a goal game, fairness to Abbey side. They're staying in touch, just that goal in it and uh, three points for and hurling is not much. Puck out now going to come from the Valley Gunner goalkeeper, Keen Troy. Patrick Fitzgerald's goal separating the sides. 37 minutes gone in this minor A final coming to you live from the far field. Battle for possession there on the far over side and it's picked up by Abbey side. They have the loose man there, Sean Lanigan, who are both sides trying to play this keep ball hurling in possession I suppose in the modern game so vital but Abisa will need to get it down the field to get the aforementioned scores to get themselves back in the game Campbell with the cross field ball looking for Goff inside Charlie has it on his Hurley gets inside trying to rip in the stick fires it in it's just gone to the wrong side of the post from Charlie Goff move was so good up to that Fergal bar the finish there it's just kind of but it was good pressure too oh well, yeah Daniel Coyley the Valley Gunner cornerback maybe stopping getting that, that clean connection on it yeah, great play by Abbey said Everything was great. Bar again, the finish on Farchie from their perspective. It's the finishing is there, is there a problem tonight. 12 wides now, I make it according to our calculations. On the wide count, they certainly will all add up, especially on a night like this evening. As the sat size battle for county minor hurling honours. Ballygunner going for four in a row. Abbey side haven't won this title since 2004. Callahan goes forward into Charlie Tree in the danger man. Off his right inside. Great pressure there and great defending by Daniel Kiley, the corner back. Charlie trying to get possession though and Ballygunner there in numbers. Craig O'Keefe trying to pick it up. Picked up by Callahan. Popped outside here. Chance for another score for Abbey side to reduce the deficit to two. It's Shawnee Lanigan, it looks like. Or Shaw or uh, Bursford, I should say. Apologies that it's over the bar. Yeah, that's, that's a four fifth, from, yeah, four is for, is it for uh, Bursford, Bursford Fergal, yeah. yeah. So he's having a stormer of the game, and uh, from a Valley Gunner perspective, he's the man we need to watch. Back to a two-point game. Fourth for Willie Bursford. One eight to nine points, and all of a sudden this minor hurling final is coming to life. Good defending there by the villagers. Popped outside as far as Billy O'Connell. Man who's only under 15 won a Munster Schools football medal, of course, with the CBS, that famous victory, and they won the Eamon and Martin Cup last year. Beautiful scale, all eyes on Owen Max Sweeney now. He done everything right, but just kind of half hit the shot, and it goes into the waiting arms of David Byrne, who'll gather those ones all evening. Down on top of Craig O'Keefe, ball bounces off the hand, but it's picked up by Horgan. The midfielder for Bally Gunner goes forward, good stride on him, evades the tackle of Campbell and pops it outside as far as Darren Nolan, who's yet to score but it doesn't reach Darren, it's good defending by Abbey side, picked up by Billy O'Connell, lovely sidestep there, was played the helmet there, I think slapped down in the wrist according to Tom Mansfield, it's going to be a free out to Abbey side, Bally Gunner making a sub. Tony Brennan is coming on there, of course uh, son of Carl who's well known of course doing a lot of work for Bally Gunner Juveniles, Fergal as you well know and Ross Stella Hunter, who battled hard, maybe yeah. just wasn't getting maybe enough possession. No, Ross had a very good semi final. Tony Brennan, great young hurler, under 15, but uh, mm. two years under age, but um, we'll look for it. Into the fray this evening, I've no doubt he's well up for the action, and obviously just a Callan there, guilty of spraying that ball down the line, but. So like John Joe Queeley, who's on there wearing number 20, he's not going to give up the goal, so Bally Gunner go back on the attack, Tommy Phelan. Bypasses him into the new man in. First touch for Tony Brennan. That's a lovely ball inside. Looking for Patrick Fitzgerald. He's looking for the free as well. Tom Mansfield not buying it though. And Aidan Higgins certainly isn't either. As Abbey side come out with it. Dara Welsh with the green helmet. Down the line as far as Adam Carl Lawler. Bypasses him. May work out for Charlie Goff though. Pops it back there. Abbey side just trying to keep possession there. Maybe overdoing it though. Down the line there by Oshin O'Reardon. Trying to get Charlie Treen in on the ball. They certainly need him on the ball. Got his first point earlier on. This one from a difficult angle. May work out. Down and tackle. Top of Burrsford. He's got four so far. He's the danger man. Fiber to Jersey. Well tested by Craig O'Keefe. Referee says he was pulled back. Free on the 21 metre line for Abbey side. And they're certainly growing in confidence. You can hear Ferry Ferncombe there on the line. And Brendan Kent to Bonish Shore. Donica Inright involved as well. Trying to urge their team on. Both sides have worked hard to get here. And that was well engineered. And Charlie Treen has a chance here now. 21 yards out. And uh, does he go for the goal here, Fergal, or would you urge him to tap it over and reduce the deficit to the minimum? Oh yeah, no, tap it over, Gavin is the answer for sure. Uh, five men in the goal, uh, but again, you know, very much Abbey side in the ascendancy. The third quarter very much has been Abbey side. I mean, at half time, Ali Gunner looked like the, the more likely winners, but very much 50-50 game right now. And that is bread and butter stuff for Charlie Trini, second of the evening, and it's back to a one point game, one eight to 10 points, and the pendulum of this game possibly swinging in favor of Abbey side who'd dearly love to stop the Gunners from making four in a row. Patrick Fitzgerald will have other ideas though. He gets on the ball going forward on the 45 minute line. Just the, the quickness and the wristiness of that strike. Brilliant. That's what he can do. That's a brilliant response for Valley Gunner. We just said Abbey side. We're getting possibly a foothold at some response for 
Yeah, and you know that kind of play is from a defensive perspective is almost impossible to stop. Super score, Patrick Fitzgerald. One eight now for Patrick Fitzgerald. What a talent! Who is under seventeen? Believe it or not, again I believe uh, next year. That's going forward there. Referee has the hand up for an advantage as Shawnee Callahan goes forward. He's covered a lot of ground. Has the hand pass inside there. In as far as the danger man, Charlie Treen turns to his trusty left hand side and fires it over the bar. It's back to a one point game. Now we're hurling here in Far Field and this game beginning to come to life. Beautiful movement there, uh, Fergal. And Abbeyside, you see, getting maybe Treen on the ball now. He's starting to find his stride. Yeah, and they're growing in confidence and really growing into this game. And a game that had a slow start and was low scoring. God, it's really come to life, Kevin. Certainly has. I hope you are enjoying the uh, live stream on YouTube tonight, whether you're watching in Ballygun or Abbeyside or wherever you're tuned in, I believe. Thanks to David Burns' mother, Carla, who was in touch with us last night to say David's sister, Cloda, is tuning in from Sydney to uh, this evening's game. So, sure, probably warmer temperatures over there, for it, but uh, good to have that viewership. And I suppose it's great to have tonight's service, I suppose, available. The fact, you know, nobody can be here. Aye, it's absolutely essential. It's almost essential, Gavin, given that they've decided to close doors, which for the record, I think it was a bad call. You know, you know, there's other things that need to happen, but this wasn't one of them. Uh, it's a huge loss to everybody, but in particular GA people. And especially the parents of these young hurlers who were dropping them off, and I suppose I'd have to pick them up later on, but I'm sure they're keeping an eye on the action and urging on their sons as they go for every ball. And Tommy Phelan tries to go forward, but he's surrounded there. Great defending there, and great work rate by Abby Side, who've hunted in twos and trees, both sides in fairness. The work rate and energy has been second to none. Darren Nolan. Off his right hand side, wrong side where he's hitting, the umpires just have a look at it and it's gone wide. He got one there earlier on and possibly maybe shooting from a difficult angle for him. didn't have maybe many bodies inside there to choose from. But it's only Mally Gunners, I think, fifth wide, Gavin, and compare that on the other side to Abbey side. You know, 12 wides and you know, it's a one point game, so Abbey side just could rule those wides. And Liam Lynch is going to make his way into the fray in place of Owen McSweeney, who uh, battled hard, had that lovely touch there a few minutes yeah, ago. He's a good hurler, you know, he's a good hurler, he's a guy who's capable of getting the scores at any time and granted he probably wasn't in the game as much as he was in the semi-final but he's certainly a guy that if he gets a chance he'll score. So, big loss for Bally Gurra. Max Weenie makes way, new man in and uh, fresh legs could come down to that, maybe the modern game, maybe twin, they say it's a 20 man game now, we'll see will that trend be in fruition this evening. Charlie Treen coming more into the game, growing in confidence as Fergal said earlier on, up into the clouds, keeper right behind it, good goalkeeping, kept his eye on it by Keane Troy. And picked out uh, Keelan Furlong. Did Keelan touch it on the ground? Abbey side are calling for that. Their mentors on the line. Referee is happy enough to leave the play flow. As uh, Fergal said, Tom contributing. Tom Mansfield contributing to a very even spectacle here this evening in this county minor A final between these two great sides. We've had many great battles underage, all the way up from Borden and Oak level right up to this uh, minor final this evening. And uh, again, Abbey's Valley Gunner there just punching the air with delight because Abbey side overplayed possession there. and that's a big free to win, I suppose, Fergal, in such a tight game as well. And both sides, you know, the, the work rate there. Yeah, I'm not trying sure ferociously I, I forward. Was it a bit maybe harsh? I, I couldn't quite see it from here which player it was, but the Abbey side player stopped assuming he had a free and then was going for over carrying himself. Yeah, it's a big, there's a slight wind in favour of Ballygunner in the second half. We can see it from the national flag flying. Mm. Patrick Fitzgerald is, well, he's the guts of 90 to 100 yards out. So if this goes over, it's a huge, huge score, but a hugely difficult one for Patrick Fitzgerald. Monster score, and I suppose to use the old adage they say, keep going until the whistle goes, and that's what Bally Gunner did. It fell in their direction, overcarrying all eyes now on Patrick Fitzgerald. It'll be a monster score if it goes over. David Byrne is, uh, you know, the way he's looking up, getting ready to get the uh, slitter ready as it's just gone to the right hand side of the post. And why difficult one for any free taker, including Patrick Fitzgerald, who's got 1 8 out of Bally Gunner's 1 9 this evening. 1 point game, 1 9 to 11 points. And uh, with that, referee Tom Mansfield calls for the water break in the uh, second half, which has, I suppose, become an accustomed to down now these new rules with players arriving togged off. But has opened up a bit, I suppose, maybe, Fergal, if it's fair to say that, in this uh, opening quarter of the second half and just a one-point game. And, yeah, third uh, quarter, Gavin, has been hugely, different team, isn't yeah, it, yeah, outside, hugely yeah. entertaining. And uh, the quality of the hurling, as you said, in difficult conditions. I'm not sure is that are those difficult conditions captured on camera um, because the pitch is in such great condition, but it's very, very slippery surface. And, you know, it's a game that where you're going to see a lot of errors. And, you know, I think one point game at the moment, this could go down to the wire and it will come down to perhaps the team that makes the least number of mistakes. 1-9 to 11 points, Valley Gunner a point in front and uh, both teams getting their well-earned drop of water I suppose at this stage. And uh, just a one-point game, of course we will have extra time if it is uh, level. 
Yeah, Floodlights at least two teams on, yeah, went so. to extra time and it was it 16 did, and, 16 and I think even then so, there was only a pocket of ball between yeah, them. Yeah, so it just goes to show last year, this year, there literally is a pocket of a ball between these two teams and uh, to be fair, two very, very competitive teams and two teams that are 100% up for it and, uh, you know, I think both teams will do whatever it takes in this last quarter just to just edge themselves over that line. Thankfully the rain has eases, possibly maybe the, the can before the storm, which is due to batter maybe Waterford later on, but thankfully Fergal stayed conditions some way have stayed dry. I know that surface is a little bit greasy, but yeah, the wind, good evening the, that's in it. Yeah, absolutely. The wind has picked up that little bit and it is favouring Valley Gunner in this last quarter, whereas in the first quarter it was almost the the, 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 the flag was dead, it was almost non existent, but it has picked up as the evening has gone on and it's favouring Valley Gunner. Yeah, Tony's a huge factor in the game, but whatever, you know, coming into this last quarter when legs have been a little bit more tired, you know. That breeze may just be, 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 be a small factor that might work in Ballygunner's favour, but it's anyone's game. And Abby said tails are up, and certainly the third quarter was theirs, and they're the team in the ascendancy for sure. Tomas Rua Kyla has made his way back up, no doubt he's hoping for an Abby side win this evening. Thanks to Tomas and indeed Willie, our cameraman upstairs, for facilitating tonight's broadcast. Delighted to be associated with it. And indeed, all who are tuned in, we hope you're enjoying the action. A one point game. 1 9 to 11 points. Who's going to win the county minor A hurling title for 2020? We didn't think we'd have a minor championship. We didn't think we'd have a lot of championships, but we have. Cup is here in front of us. Is it going to be going back to Valley Gunner for a fourth year in a row, or is it going to be going across the bridge for the first time since 2004? All eyes now on Luke Hogan. Gets possession for the Gunners on the far over side. Slips on the greasy surface, but has support from Craig O'Keefe off his left hand side. Looking for the run inside of Tommy Feen. He's shown all night in front of his man. Gets some latitude here. Sean O'Finn. After him, puts the pressure on him. This will be some score from a difficult angle. Watched all the way by David Byrne. That's great goalkeeping by Byrne. And relieves the pressure there for Abbey Side. Huge clearance up the line. Very good football goalie as well, but a top quality hurling goalkeeper as well. And that's on display here in Farfield tonight. Beautiful pick up there by Keelan Furlong. Did he use the hand or was it off the hurley? He's a good footballer as well. But anyway, Tom Mansfield didn't spot it and he gets away with it. Putting the Gunners back on the attack. This game is really coming to life in the last quarter. Patrick Fitzgerald, beautiful. Sick work evades that first challenge off his left hand side. Has it curled in sufficiently? Looks okay from our commentary position. It's over the bar. It's 1 9 now for Patrick Fitzgerald. That's some score for him. Yeah, what a score again in these conditions. He timed his run perfectly, and Ballygunner just need to keep getting him on the ball. And the more he's on the ball, the better it is for Ballygunner for sure. Super score. It's a two point game 1 10 to 11 points. Abisai trying to get possession there and trying to go forward. Picked up by Willie Barrisford. You can hear Ballygunner saying make him play. That's exactly what they did. And good work rate by Aaron O'Neill. Ballygunner have brought that to the table. There in a so too of Abbey side Working really, really hard. Fitzgerald going forward. Referee happy enough with that tackle. And Abbey side get it down the line. Adam Carr Lawler, the substitute introduced early in the first half. Cuts inside. Man with the yellow boots. He certainly won't be missed with them tonight. Again, looking for the run inside there of John Joe Queeley. But again, Dunica Fitzpatrick. He's hurled really well at cornerback for Bally Gunner, so too has the wing back he, uh, Craig O'Keefe hurled first time by Tony Brennan gets it inside there referee had the advantage up I think for an original foul maybe on Tony as you say he may be only under 15 Fergal but he's a very co confident and comfortable hurler and uh, I suppose didn't make use of the possession but referee had the hand up for the advantage and chance now for Patrick Fitzgerald to add to his tally yeah young Tony Brennan great competitor and uh He's the kind of guy, whatever age he plays at, you know, you know, you know what you're going to get from him, which is 100% on every, on every occasion. But chance for Patrick Fitzgerald here. As I say, normal day, bread and butter stuff for Patrick, but, but very, very difficult to get And it. Thomas Welsh here has just spotted something, I think. I don't know, was there a bit of changing of the slitter here? There was a... <laughs> and I suppose that's the modern rule. I suppose I don't think you're allowed the exchange, the actual match ball. And spotted by Tomas Welch, who's an inter-county referee, so obviously Tom is going to listen to him, and it's going to be a throw ball, I'm not too sure, Derek. anyway, we'll yeah, get on with it, we'll follow the play, come back to it in a minute. I, I, I didn't realise that was the rule, um, Gavin, but maybe it is, I'm sure Tom knows what he's doing. I'm sure he does. Backed up by inter-county referee there, and the referee says, Valley Gunner, it's going to be round two here and here. The man with the orange cap is back in, maybe for his round two, to give this time Patrick Fitzgerald the towel instead of the slitter. We can all have a bit of a laugh about that one, but uh, yeah, I always thought that was an interesting one, whether that before it was the fact that you would throw him in the dry slitter, you know, but... But I didn't realise, and I'm sure Tom is right, Tom Mansfield and Thomas Welsh, obviously a very experienced inter-county referee. I'm sure that must be the rule. I didn't realise it was. Yeah, I don't think the slitter can be changed, but maybe the drying of the, the hurley with the towel is probably sufficient enough, but... But again, very difficult free, difficult angle in these conditions, but normal day bread and butter for Patrick, but this is a tricky one. 
That certainly is. It'll be a huge one to put his team three points in front and that looks like it's curled in sufficiently from Patrick Fitzgerald's point of view. Brilliant score again. Brilliant striking. 110 he's got now out of 111. Bally Gunner introducing another fresh pair of legs. This time it's in the shape of uh, Donna Cooney. I ref this guy a couple of weeks ago in under 15 yeah, game. Fergal, huge 15, player. Yeah, big man, another under 15. So, you know, three under 15s on the field now with Aaron O'Neill. Uh, Donna Cooney and Tony Bennett are forward line. Yeah, three very, very big under 15s, but but, but very young forward line uh, to finish out the last quarter for Bally Gunner. He's making way for uh, Darren Nolan. He chipped in with a point. Worked really hard. Always gives you great work right, Darren Nolan. Fairness and energy too as both teams have tonight. Abbey side pick it up. Oh, using the hand pass there over and look for Lanigan there and it was just slightly over hit, but he does regain it. Second time of asking, putting the villagers on the front foot. They need to get the ball up the field. Prodding forward here as far as Ushina rear. This lad has pace. Puts on that second gear, puts on the afterburners, tries to go forward. Referee says there was a pullback there. Keelan Furlong was the guilty party. It's a free into Abbey side. This is one they certainly need for to reduce the deficit to two points, excuse me, as we tick into the final maybe eight, nine minutes plus whatever Tom Mansfield and the officials uh, decide to add on here this evening. Yeah, it looks like normal time, about seven minutes left. Three point game, a bit important three now. I think it's going to be Charlie, uh, Charlie Treen is going to take it. And, you know, I say it should be bread and butter enough. It's straight in front of the goal, just outside the 45. You expect this one to go over, reduce the deficit to two points. I can hear some rain coming underneath us. I'm glad we're in the commentary position as this, uh, perhaps the storm is on the way later on this evening. But Abbey Sider trying to eat into that Bally Gunner goal advantage as Charlie Treen hits this ball straight and true over the blue spot on the crossbar. It's back to a two point game. And this minor final, which many people predicted would go right down to the wire. That looks like what it's going to do. Possibly might even require an extra 20 minutes of extra time. We'll follow the play. On the far overside is picked up by Patrick Fitzgerald, who's really dominated this minor final. Very close to the sideline. Beautiful stick work, that flick up. How did he get that into his hand? Beautiful stick work by Patrick. Into the new man in. Brennan shortens the grip and the stick on the stick, tries to prod him forward in as far as Tommy Phelan. Sticking to his guns though and has done all evening is Sean Oakfin. That's good corner back play. And that's good defence by Abbey Side. Bit of space here now for Dara Welch, son of Pat, of course. And he opens the shoulders and drives it a good 60, 70 metres down the field. May bounce in favour of Charlie Treen here. He gets on it. They need him on the ball. Looks for the diagonal ball. Battle for possession here between centre forward and centre back. Picked up by Campbell, the centre forward for Abbey side. Shortens the grip and the stake off his trusty left hand side. Fires it over the bar. It's back to a one point game. Second of the evening for Louis Campbell. Again, he's grown in confidence, having a great battle there with Rob Maguire, who's hurling well for Bally Gunner. But that was a nice wristy finish there. By the centre forward. Back to a one point game, 111 to 13. This one looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. Five minutes left in the County Minor A hurling final of 2020. Patrick Fitzgerald will have other ideas. Bally Gunner will want to tack on a few more scores. Off the hurley, just inside the 65 metre line. But that one just tail. The minute you could let it left his stick, you could see it was tailing. And uh, David Byrne not going to hang around. I'm sure Abbey Side want to get on with it quickly and try and get an equaliser and possibly maybe even go in front. Down on top of Willie Bursford. Battling hard there with Craig O'Keefe, who was. Illegal according to Tom, we're right behind that one, Fergal. Both players may be going, we'll just get on with it quickly as Willie Bursford again, you can see he's looking for the run of Treen. Beautiful handling by Charlie Treen out in front of his man. Trying to turn to his right hand side, Bally Gunner, three men after him. A wall of black and red jerseys off the hurley, could be some score if it goes over. And the umpire thought he was pointing at the other one to put up the flag. It's Colin Dunford who's on umpire duty down there, but it's wide. Again, we just follow the play, getting on with a quickly our Bally Gunner down on top of Dara Welsh. He's covered an amount of ground. This one is beautifully flicked away from there. I think it was Tony Brennan who got the tackle in. <laughs> Bally Gunner does shoot back into a two point lead. Patrick Fitzgerald again, this time off his left hand side. That was a super score. Could have been picked up by Abbey Side for a great score by Paddy, Paddy Fitzgerald. Abbey Side back on the attack again. This can't take your eye off this one. The keepers getting on it quickly. Billy O'Connell trying to. He's battled really, really hard. Keelan Furlan trying to pick it up. The Valley Gunner captain trying to go forward. Yellow helmet. Good tackling there by Abbey Side. Oh, good one handed flick there. Billy O'Connell trying to drive out with it. Battle for possession here. The splitter so, so crucial now. Fitzgerald trying to go forward. Um, linesman as he's flag up very close to the Abbey Side dugout there. Keelan Furlan going down with crap. Now I didn't. You think on an even like this even, but both sets of sides, they've suspended huge energy in this game and they've thrown everything in it. In fairness, they've both added to what's been a brilliant spectacle. We hope you're enjoying it too. Referee says though, there was an illegal tackle there. Donica Fitzpatrick playing from the front. He's hurled really well for a good cornerback this evening. Yeah, he's had a great game at uh, cornerback, you know, out in front and very knacky for a big lad. You know, great wrist and a good striker to ball. 
Rain starts the team down here. They were given that in far field this evening. It certainly come down. But both sets aside are going to battle to the very end of this one. Shawnee O'Callaghan for Abbey side. Right hand ball. Crossfield looking for Charlie Treen, trying to get some latitude, getting there ahead of Cormac Cantwell who tries to get in the block. This will be super. It is super from Charlie Treen. Fifth of the evening. He may have been quite in the first half. He's really come to life in the second half. That's a super score by him. We're back to a one point game as we tick into the final four minutes. And this one, Fergal, looks like it's going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, and after a very quiet first half, Charlie Treen very much has his tail up now. Tony Brennan tries to get on the ball. He's really hurled well since he's come on. Gets it, round two. Brennan with the white helmet on the far over side, looking for options. Has a man in the middle, that's Keelan Furlong, but there wasn't sufficient distance on the pass, and it's cut out. Enough for Dara Welsh to intercept. And Abby side back there in numbers, but again, this ball it may well reach Louis Campbell, though there wasn't enough distance in the shot. But that's good play by Campbell. Beautiful hurling, and with the flick pass. Tries to get Flynn away for Abby side, but again, one handed her on the night like tonight, just sometimes it doesn't come off. And the Abby side full back there, Connor Kent, trying to get it at the second time of asking. That's good play by Connor. His dad, Brendan, is on the line, of course. He's done so much work with this team. Brilliant full bat, brilliant uh, defending there by Bally Gunner. Trying to go out with it there. Referee Tom Ansied happy enough to uh, play on. And it's cleared with interest by Robert Maguire. In as far as the new man in, that's the substitute. Liam Lynch, ball under Hurley. He has a man over if he spots him. In as far as Tommy Phelan, but the pass fails to go to hand. Picked up by David Byrne, who's off his goal line. He's been pressurised, though, by Phelan. And the Abbey side goalkeeper sticks to his task though and drives his team back on the attack. But look where he hit it only out over the line. Martin Kern as he's flag up in the far over side. It might be as good as a score from a Valley Gunner point of view. Yeah, the winner of the game was in that pass or that, you know, I'm not sure what exactly happened from here. Whether Tommy just dropped the ball or not or whether the pass was right. But yeah. that was the winner of the game or possibly the loser of the game. Um, possibly on a that, night like that, tonight. Yeah, that was a chance. That was a chance to kill this game off. You know, game is one point in condition like this. If we got a goal, it was, uh, it was going to be game over. In fairness to David Byrne, he came out and smothered the angle as Patrick Fitzgerald hits this line, ball drops in and it goes harmlessly out over the end line. I see Thomas Welsh just went into uh, Tom Mansley there to possibly find out how much injury time. Two minutes there announced by Taylor Murray, the county PRO. And follow the ball now, it's with Willie Bursford tries to get it forward. In as far as the danger man, that's Charlie Treen. But again, sticking to his gun. That's brilliant defending by the corner back there, Kylie from Ali Gunner and Dunnick Fitzpatrick. He's hurt really well, but just as I say it, one hand in the hurley fails to win it there. Shawnee Callan has it. Trying to fix his helmet. As it was there a strike in action there? I didn't think so, but we'll follow the play. You can judge that one at home for yourselves. It's picked up by Cormac Cantwell. He's hurt really well. Over a tree for Paul Vic Gunner this evening. Picked up by Louis Campbell going forward. Just to pick it forward there. Combination of Keelan Furlong and Donna Cooney stopping him though. And Bally Gunner back on the attack. Tony Brennan has it. Great defending there. Brilliant blocking by Lanigan. Perfect execution there on that block. The skills of the game are all in execution here tonight. And between these two, two proud and traditional hurling clubs, many great battles over the years, under 13, 14, 15, and indeed last year's under 16 county final. This year, they're doing something similar at minor level. Patrick Fitzgerald, about to be tackled by Billy O'Connell. Lovely stick work by Fitzgerald. Louis Campbell after him, fiber the jersey tested. Referee happy enough to wave play on. 45 minutes out, super score. He punches the air with delight because he knows that one is on target. Oh. Oh, Fergal Hartley, what a score. What a score, you know, what a player. Man of the match performance. What a score when you need it at a time like this, when you're into injury time, your team is one point up. Absolutely superb from Patrick. 112 out of 113, that's some return. Yeah, but Gavin, credit, I know the game is no way, but credit to both teams here for the effort they've put in. I mean, you can see it in the last passage of play. Every player, both teams, just literally, you know, the cliche, throwing your body on the line. They're doing everything they possibly can to win this game. What a, what, what, what a finish to a minor what final. Superb. What a absolutely. Especially in that driving rain and the wind which is even picked up on both sides. They're leaving everything out there. We knew they'd empty the tank. And they certainly will. Shawnee Callahan will. Nabby side will. They'll die in their boots. They want to dearly win it. A brilliant interception there on the far over side. Not too sure who it was there, but it's Mark O'Donnell who picked up the flick away off the hurley there. Brilliant execution and brilliant skill by Bally Gunner. But Abbey side will win it back and they're going to fight to the bitter end. They're looking for Charlie Treen inside but staying in the centre back is Rob McGuire. He's hurt really well at six for Bally Gunner and held that position well. What about this man? Patrick Fitzgerald going forward. Draws the foul there from Aidan Niggins who came across. He'll be in no rush with this one and just to watch this fella in full flight Fergal. I've seen him in more than no finals in that over the last couple of seasons and not afraid to bring other players into the game as well, but just when he has that stride as well, he has that elegant style to get away from a defender. Very, very hard to mark. Yeah, he moves here, always reminds me of a hurling version of Morris Fitzgerald from Kerry. He's just 
when he's striding his poetry motion. Obviously, his cousin Mark, an absolute phenomenal talent as well. But uh, you know, what a performance in the county final and uh, driving rain, difficult free, and this will put Ballygunner three points up if it goes over. Patrick Fitzgerald, and just as you say it, Fergal. It's gone to the wrong side of the post. It's a two points game. They say it's a dangerous field in Hurley. 61, as you can see, in a bit minutes on your clock. 62. Two minutes added on by Tom Mansu. There possibly will be a couple of seconds. It's at the referee's discretion. Abbey side have to get a goal, you feel, if they're going to rescue this one. It's put forward by Sean O'Callaghan. Charlie Treen looking for it inside. They've battled really, really hard to get themselves back into this game. They're going forward. It's the new man in. For Abbey side with Ballygunner back there in numbers. And Aaron O'Neill drops the ball at a vital stage. Craig O'Keefe trying to win it back for the county champions. They're going for four in a row. He's trying to drive out. Hefty challenge there. Charlie Goff. And the referee says he overplayed it. Good pressure by Abbey Side. This is possibly maybe last chance saloon for Abbey Side. They'll have to drop it in around the square unless the referee says otherwise that there may be one more attack. Tom Fives and Andy Maloney, the Valley Gunner mentors, are saying get back. I'd imagine, Fergal, this one has to be dropped in around the house. Yeah, I mean, it's two and a half minutes gone. They said two minutes, so this is last chance to do it. So it's going to be dropped in, and on a night like tonight, yeah, absolutely anything can happen, Gavin. So this is it. Nearly every player in the pitch is inside in the small, inside in the small, but the large parallelogram. You know, this is last chance. This is it. Uh, I think Shawnee is coming out to take this one. Last chance saloon for Abbey Side. They have to get a goal, you feel. It's dropped in around the square. Hands on the heads from the Valley Gunner subs here underneath us. It's trying to be flicked inside there. Very, very hard to see where it is. It's a cluster for possession there and there. Tom Mansfield has the whistle to the lips. Will he allow a few more seconds? Charlie Treen trying to get it. Valley Gunner back there, numbers two. Possession so, so vital here. It's picked up by a man in a black and red jersey. Flicked off him though. Great defending. By Bally Gunner and the referee blows the full time whistle. The minor A final is over. It's four in a row for the Gunners. They greet each other with gusto. The ball dropped in. It was well defended by Bally Gunner. Credit both teams. They left everything out there. It's four in a row for Bally Gunner. 113 to 14 points. 112 of that coming from Patrick Fitzgerald. But again, Fergal, credit both teams. They left everything out there. Really sticky conditions, particularly in the last 10. Heartbreak for Abbey Side, who emptied themselves with the title. Once again, goes back to Ballygunner. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, Gavin, uh, as you say, it's huge credit to both teams on a terrible night for Hurling, particularly in that last quarter. An absolutely Coming terrible night for Hurling, and to see two young teams. And remember, minor now is under 17, so a lot of these guys, 15, 16, 17 years of age, and to see them just empty themselves on the field like that, you know, on a night like tonight, which is a winter's night in the middle of August, it's really heartwarming to watch. So fantastic, fantastic final under hugely difficult conditions. And, you know, your heart will go out to Abbeyside after leaving everything on the field and just to come out on the, on, on the wrong side, a two-point game. But for sure, that game was, was a 50-50. It could have gone either way, as it had in last year's under-16 final. And uh, I say disappointment for Abbeyside. They'll be, they'll be gutted, given that they were so close, so, so close. And they may well rue some of those chances in the first half that maybe when they were going for pop shots, you know, from, from tricky angles and from distances. And when, when maybe they might have been better served to leave it inside. Uh, but you certainly yeah. can't. You certainly can't fault them. No, or Bally Gunner for that matter, for the huge, huge effort they put in tonight. Absolutely. Both sets of teams really empty themselves in really sticky conditions in the last 10. And uh, the cup is about to be presented to uh, Keelan Furlong for uh, Bally Gunner. But both sets of teams, as Fergal said, really put in a massive shift. And thanks again to the sponsors for tonight at Esco of Abbeyside and STS of Bally Gunner and all who contributed to the broadcast. The Mosru O'Kyla did all the spade work behind the scenes to get tonight's broadcast possible. And huge viewership, I believe, of course, it was... I suppose with the spectators not being here, great viewership and no doubt happy viewers down in Ballygunner as they've claimed uh, four in a row, 113, 14 points of credit, both teams for serving up a real thrilling encounter. And again, Patrick Fitzgerald, Fergal, I know we keep on mentioning, we don't like signalling out, I suppose, individual players, but tonight some of the scores really out of the top drawer. Yeah, and when you take into consideration, Gavin, the night that was in it and how difficult it was to take scores from, from anywhere, what would have been a simple score on another day, you know, was a difficult score tonight. Uh, and when you think of that he scored, I think as you said, 112 out of 113 on a night like tonight and did something similar in the semi-final, I think he had 116, um, you know, a great, great talent and... Uh, well, he seems to have his head in his shoulders as well. But look, you said the Valley Gunner supporters will be the happy one too, and they will. But I think the people of Abbeyside tuning in tonight should be hugely proud of that team in terms of the way they just left. Not just in terms of how they prepared. I know they were, 
know they were working hard right from early year from early doors but in terms of the way they just threw everything on the field there tonight they should be so so proud of their team as well absolutely absolutely certainly gave it everything the cup is about to be presented very very shortly uh, you're going to make uh, to also going to make his way down with that uh, mic there but it's uh, Bally Gunner who are the uh, minor eight champions Neil Moore the vice chairman of Kamaluka Square Port Origa is going to make the uh, presentation now to Keelan Furlong um, JJ Cavanagh and Sons Division A Minor Hurling County Final. Um, now to compliment both teams on a fantastic display, well, I'll ask such a, a miserable night. Unfortunately, the weather uh, is as bad as maybe the COVID restrictions we've had lately. So great credit to both teams and their mentors for serving up such a fantastic game. Uh, besides, I know we'll be disappointed, but particularly there in the second half, we like kept going right to the very yeah. end. And just maybe could have got a bit of luck along the way. It'd be for a ball I'm still on. I just go down and talk with him, and I come back and get that you come down and bring the mic back in. And that's when the speech is finished. Yeah, I know what this one too. Today is Benny Gunner's evening. Congratulate their team, fine team, and their mentors and all involved in their club. All the work they're doing, promoting hurling in the city. And again, I'm sure some of the Benny Gunner team will be wearing the Benny Gunner senior jersey in years to come. So, without further ado, because I imagine that your parents maybe are waiting outside to meet you, so uh, I'd like to present the trophy as best as we can uh, to your captain, uh, Keelan Furlong. So, Keelan Furlong about to hoist the minor hurling trophy for 2020. It's four in a row for the Gunners. He's just up here on his own, I suppose, but to avoid the mixture, I suppose, and not much chance for social distancing, I suppose. And Fiona won't be in Valley Gunner tonight. Up the cup goes, and it's going back. Down the Dunmore Road this evening to Bally Gunner. See Andy Maloney, Tom Fives, Colin Kyo. A lot of work being done in the background. The mentors of both teams, of course, deserve great credit. And Keelan now will have a couple of focal from uh, Keelan on a night his side are crowned Division 1 County Minor Hurling Champions. I think he's just about remembering all the names here and the rain teaming down on top of those uh, Bally Gunner players and Abbey side players who you really feel for. They empty themselves tonight. Uh, what a battle. Credit to both teams. And we do hope you enjoy tonight's action as well. Thanks for all the joy in the Again, not possible to you either. Not leaving anyone out in his speech, uh, well thought out of speech. You know, Captain, sometimes you don't want to be yeah, thinking about these things on such prestigious nights, but. That is just so much. Um, oh, I'm still out of bread here now, but. Look, we've been through it through the years, every single time we come up against you, you know it's not going to be easy. You really are a today and pushed us to the very end, so fair play, lads. Two cheers for Abby's side. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! You, you, get that mic for, you get that mic for Fergal, just bring it, I might have one quick word. Keelan Furlong then has just hoisted the uh, County Minor A Hurling Trophy for uh, 2020. Brilliant game, brilliant attitude from uh, both teams. And uh, we might just get the other mic back up. We'll have one quick final word with Fergal uh, before we do uh, sign out this evening. Tomas has gone down to get that. Uh, big thanks to Rua, of course, who's no doubt disappointed with the results. But uh, Abby side will be back again. They're a great club with great tradition and they will be back and Fergal they gave a monumental effort here this evening just two points in it in the end fantastic effort and difficult conditions but fair to say that you know the standard of hurling here hurling is alive and well in the nation particularly at minor level on the county board I know it was a fast paced championship which was run off quick but it was about momentum the two best teams were in the final and they really contributed to a great spectacle yeah, I know it was a great championship, funny enough, this year, not just because of the standard, but because of the fact that it was all, you know, it was run over a relatively short period of time, so made it hugely interesting. There was huge interest in the minor championship, but the standard was really, really good. Again, can't, I'm labouring the point, and you can't repeat it too often, but the conditions 
tonight was so so difficult and, and, and when you take that in the context of that the standard was really really good one point to make I think um, Gavin is a, a, a Tom Anson did a super job I mean there will always be decisions that one team will disagree with and you know there might have been one or two here and there on both sides but when you consider the conditions when you consider sometimes that in conditions like this it becomes a game of freeze that didn't become a game of freeze it became a, a game of, of, of open hurling and, and fast paced hurling and uh, you have to give great credit to Tom certainly do indeed well, that's where we'll sign off in Friar Field this evening once again thanks to everyone who uh, made the possibility of uh, tonight's live stream possible big thanks to Tomas Rue O'Kyla Willie O'Mahony of course on uh, camera difficult night to be up there in that uh, crow's nest and at the camera underneath uh, with Bally Gunner the county minor A hurling champions thanks as always Fergal to yourself and uh, we'll catch you again Thank in the not too distant future please guys no big senior game the weekend for Bally Gunner against uh, Liz Moore and uh, we look forward to that as well so thanks to Tomas and again the sponsors uh, Desco of Abbeyside and STS so for myself, Gavin Whelan, Gerv Mogot, huge tune, uh, listenership or viewership even tonight. Bally Gunner, the minor A champions for the fourth year in a row. Full-time score here from what's now a very wet for our field. Bally Gunner, 113. Abbeyside, 14 points.